As requested by a gazillion of you, I'm finally doing a Magnet Media Breakdown. If I'm being honest, I'd never heard of them, so I went onto their YouTube channel to get some ideas and inspiration for what kind of effects we could be breaking down in today's video. One thing I saw that they used very frequently was this 2D, 3D parallax effect, which I thought looked super sick, so I figured we'd be working on that today. This effect is made using a couple of different photos where you cut out the different subjects and layer them in 3D space. I use Adobe Firefly to generate some assets that we could be using. I created three different photos, one of the background, which is a sky, the middle ground, which is a farmhouse type of thing, and the foreground, which is just an open field. Once I had the assets generated, I dragged them into Photoshop where I used the object selection tool to separate the foreground from the background in each image. Ideally, you want to spend a bit more time on these edges as they are pretty rough, but they'll do the job. Now that everything is separated, we're going to save the files in a folder that we can easily get back to because we're going to be dragging that file into Adobe After Effects. In After Effects, I'm going to be working in 1920 by 1080 composition at 24 frames per second just because it's nice and easy to work with. I'm going to drag in my PSD file and open up the pre-comp and I'm just going to delete the first two layers just because they were preview layers and then I'm going to copy my layers into our actual composition just to make it easier to work with. I'm just going to center them up a little bit. I'm going to turn the 3D property on for all of them. As you can see, I'm working in a two view mode just to make it a lot easier to position our layers relative to each other. I recommend doing either the left or right hand side just because it's the easiest, at least that's what I found, but it's a personal preference. And then of course our active view. Next, we're going to add a camera. So layer, new camera and I'm going to be working with a 50 millimeter camera and I'm just going to set the f-stop to 1.8 for some delicious depth of field. If we zoom out, you can see we have our camera in here and then we have all our layers right here. But to create the parallax effect, we're going to have to stagger our layers. So we have our background layer at the very end and our foreground layer at the very front and then our middle ground, well, right in the middle. First, I'm going to start with our background layer. I'm just going to move it all the way back to the back of our composition. I'm going to take our field cutout, which is our foreground and move it very close to the camera. And then our middle ground will be just find somewhere right in between those two. It looks a little bit funny because we have all this transparent area around it. So to get rid of the transparent areas in the back, I'm just gonna scale up our background layer until it fits the whole scene. Now I found with this effect, it's easier to animate backwards. So I'm gonna go to about three seconds where I want our animation to end and position the layers how I want the final look to be. So I'm gonna take our foreground and I'm gonna move it up a little bit until we see it. And I'm actually gonna scale it down a little bit just to get the right look. And this is very much just trial and error until you get something that you feel looks good. Right about here, I think looks pretty sick, especially with the depth of field and the positioning of all the layers. For the animation itself, there's only really two things that we're gonna be animating and that's the camera properties. We're gonna be animating the focus distance and the position of the camera. So I'm gonna keyframe the position of the camera and the focus distance. Now the two view mode is especially helpful when animating the focus distance because we have a visual representation. So in this case, I want to line up my focus distance with our middle ground because that's what I want to be in focus. So if I just scroll through the numbers here, you can see that we have this pink line that represents the focus distance. And I'm just going to line it up with the position of our middle ground layer. Now I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to use my position tool to zoom in very close to the house. Just about here will do. And again, I'm going to move the focus distance and I'm just going to use this layer right here, which is our middle ground. And I'm just gonna line it up once again to make sure that it is in focus. And now if we play this back, you can see that it kind of always stays in focus because I will have linear keyframes. Although that looks pretty cool, it's not super interesting or dynamic. So to simulate a real world camera and to make our scene a little more interesting, we're gonna use some focus hunting to really emulate that we are in a real scene. It's super simple to do this. All you gotta do is set a keyframe on your focus distance, go forward a little bit, move it either forward or backwards doesn't really matter we just want it out of focus ever so slightly go forward a little bit again and put our focus distance back on our original layer if we play that back and we look at our active camera it looks kind of like this just a very simple little out of focus element once we've added the focus hunting i'm going to select all my keyframes and i'm going to add some easing to it and i'm just going to use the usual sexy speed and as you can see the focus distance isn't fully lined up with the animation of the cat or the position of the camera. That's because we have a couple extra keyframes in the focus distance that messes with the easing a little bit. It actually looks pretty cool because we get some of that real world realism where everything is not in focus all the time. A final thing I want to add is a little extra focus and position animation. It's just two keyframes, one for each. That's just going to add a little bit more oomph to our animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the position of the camera backwards to zoom out a little bit more than it would at the end. And then I'm going to change the focus distance to focus on our foreground. Move that all the way up to line up with our foreground. The sky isn't 
fully covering the edges. So again, I'm just gonna scale that up even more. And it's a little bit quick at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag these keyframes out a little further from each other. It's still a little bit too fast, the blur of it anyways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the keyframe and go into the easing. And we can just change it a little bit and move that up. Just kind of line up the line here and then ease it out ever so slightly. And that's pretty much how you create a parallax effect. Now there's a couple things I think you can add to it to make it a little bit more interesting. First thing is we're gonna add some text cause that's another thing that Magnates Media uses a lot. So in this case, I'm gonna make two instances of text. I'm gonna do something very simple like, uh, like, and I'm just gonna scale that up a little bit like that. doesn't really matter what font you have and I'm gonna position that right there, duplicate it move it over here and change that to subscribe and i think that's a wonderful idea that you should also be doing to really make this part of the scene we're going to position these two text layers in 3d space as well and place them on the same planes as some of our other elements so the like i'm going to position in the same place as our middle ground so i'm just going to move that forward a little bit move it to the right and kind of put it behind this tree over here just because it looks a little bit cooler and then the subscribe i'm going to move up and I'm gonna move it way forward because I want that to be in the foreground. And I'm just gonna scale our text layer down a little bit because it looks very big up here in the front. Move it out a little bit more as well. Kind of out here, right behind the little foreground element. Since the only thing we've animated is the camera, we can place objects and shapes and other pictures in the scene and they'll automatically be part of the scene as long as you place them in the same planes as our other element. When our house is in focus, the text is also in focus, the like text, because it's on the same plane. And the same goes with the foreground. When that's coming into focus, our text goes into focus as well. You can change it to be wherever you want it to be. And it's really just playing around with it until you get a result that you really like and something that fits your story. And it's just a cool little trick you can use to create some more interesting scenes. Last thing I want to do is add two adjustment layers. The first one is going to be a force motion blur. This is just going to give us some of that motion blur that we can't get using the 3D tools in After Effects. I'm just going to keep it at the default settings because it looks decent enough. The last adjustment layer is going to be a posterized time. I believe that most of the Magnets Media videos are in 60 frames per second, but I'm not a big fan of that look. So using posterized time is something that I really like to use just to create a bit more of a stylized look and I'm just going to set that to 12 frames per second. And if you watch my last Vox animation video, you know that you can go into your camera settings and change the iris shape to hexagon to get a little bit more of a pleasing bokeh. And that's pretty much all there is to creating this 2D, 3D parallax effect. This is an effect that Magnets Media use a bunch and they do it very successfully because they combine it with transitions and really good storytelling. All we end up using is three photos, one camera and After Effects, working in 3D space, two text layers, but it's not really necessary. It's just whatever you want to put in there. You can even do it with just one picture if you wanted to. I just want to say thank you and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.